right now what we're going to be working on is High Craft. I'm DJ Riggs, creative director at Main Entrance Artist, New York City. And with our model, Masha, she's actually from Muse Models. So I'm going to start off first by prepping the hair. Like anything we do, you have to start by building the foundation up. So first starting with the TG Catwalk Root Boost, just spraying it mainly on the crown area just so that we can actually create some type of lift as the hair starts to dry naturally. First, just making sure that I create a nice balance. I'm just gonna lean Masha's head back, and I'm actually utilizing the tip of the nose just a, as a balancing point for where to actually isolate the diamond section that I'm gonna take. So usually bringing the comb just lightly down here, working my way up. Once I connect, you can see I'm using that index finger just to kind of continue the flow. And once we get that nice and section, nice and cleanly, it kind of really opens up the roadmap for what's gonna happen next. Now starting from there, the next thing that I wanna think about is actually the texture of the hair around the hairline. Right where it leaves off is where we're gonna actually start the parting. And then from there, diagonal back, and then diagonal back again, therefore creating a diamond. Notice, I'm just gonna start on this side just to kind of show you guys how I combed the hair first. And you can almost see when the light hits where the color pops out at. So therefore, the section is actually coinciding to help out with what we're actually trying to utilize as our focal point. Then in that case, obviously, it's just really making the cut and color work together to give us a nice, a nice feel for her hair. So as I come around the back area, you can just start to see right where we're starting from that point. And notice if I bring it down, it connects right with the ear area. So you see, coming from the front, right to this offset that actually connects with the top of the ear. I check for that same balancing point, just right there. And then I'm just gonna comb all of that hair over so it makes it a tad bit easier to get the section in. All right, so now we're just gonna take that and then just give it a double tuck and twirl. Now that I can just see the isolation, we're just gonna comb my hair. And the key question I have for Masha is, which way do you want to wear it? Is it this way or that way? This way. Perfect. If you forget that, you kill it. Next thing for me, after I know which way she wants to wear it, is just utilize the arch of the eyebrow. And just comb the hair in that direction that we want it to go. And just to give you guys just a nice visual of where we want it to sit, you can see as I push the hair over, you see how it's coming right at that cheekbone area. So to do this particular cut, the shears that I'm gonna utilize are TG shears actually, about five and a half in terms of inches, and I'm gonna utilize it in a slicing technique. Now before I even touch the hair with it, I just kinda wanna show you the movement of that. When you come in, you have the blades open, and you're gonna slice the hair, giving it the direction that you want it to go in. Just start off by giving the hair that movement. So you'll notice, I'm just gonna slow it down just a bit. And you can start to see the angle that's starting to be created. Now, it, we do something that we call option length to where we don't cut it right where we want it to go first. You gradually reach your perfection point. So I'm just gonna continue through this area right here and let you guys kinda see the flow of how this all comes together. But notice, everything that I'm doing is gonna over direct back to this guide section. Now, in order to check this cut that we just made, we're just gonna comb the hair over and then down. So you can see, just like that, we've created a nice asymmetry on the face. This next cut that you're gonna see me make, we call this slide cutting. So just leaning the head to the side first. And then right here, notice I'm lining it up right with her cheekbone area. and you can start to see how the hair actually comes off. Now when I comb it down, the first thing that you see pops out, the hair wants to shift backward, which actually opens up her face a bit more. The first thing I wanna do now is just kinda leaning the head shape down, combing the hair down to natural fall. Now I'm gonna take the shears, and remember that slide cutting technique that we did around the face? I'm just gonna take that and do that same thing. Continue working that until we build strength and movement around that baseline, just to kind of show you that push that's taking place. 
we can just kind of see the angle that that's starting to create right there. So we're just gonna continue on with that. And so you can see the length on it, like the hair is still long. And I think the key thing is that you don't necessarily have to go short to have a nice change. Sometimes you just need nice elements inside of your haircut, even though it's long. All right, and then the most important thing that most women love is making sure that they maintain the corner of the hair. So obviously that's the reason for it getting slightly longer. So no matter what happens, this hair actually is gonna naturally fall to the front. She'll still feel confident because she'll maintain the corners, but yet in the back area, she'll still have a nice feel that's actually enjoyable to look at. Now, going into the diamond section, just gonna unroll that. We call this control slicing. I'm gonna have a bend ahead backward. Coming with the shears from on top, I'm gonna close the blades as I move toward myself. And with that, what happens is that you get a nice flow of short to long and continue. Last section, on this side. Okay, now I just wanna show you how those layers are gonna fall. Now you can see when I comb my hair down, it's gonna fall with that same asymmetry that we put into her hair on the underneath. So that way everything actually blends together. We're gonna take that same technique and do it on the opposite side. And just making sure my finger position is set properly and then going right for the cut. Next, I'm gonna take that same section and come toward the front. just coinciding to give her texture along with her fringe, just cutting in between. All right, so now I'm just going in and just detailing out a little bit. And we're gonna strengthen it up just by adding quite graphic lines on the perimeter. And when I say graphic, mainly I'm just talking about it being blunt. Because remember in high craft, that's kind of those elements that we have in there. You can see the softness inside of the fringe, and then you'll see the strength inside of the perimeter just hanging off of the shape. Today we're going to be working on a Shirley Manson inspired look. We're taking our inspiration from what we see in the music scene and what we see on the runway and bringing it into something that we could wear on the street. I'm Julie Pope and I'm here working in collaboration with Main Entrance Artists. Colleen here is a DJ and a freelance journalist and she's getting a new gig at Rolling Stones magazine. So with her we're going to be able to take those rocker inspirations and take the runway style from New York and collaborate it into one look for her. I'm going to start out being really strong with her eyes with a nice face. Taking a cream eyeshadow and working really close on the lid. Trying to gently pack in my product and then feather it out. It's all about with what you, st what you start with, what products you end up deciding to kind of set your base and your foundation. Working again with a cream eyeshadow using a dark gray color from Makeup Forever, their aqua cream. Because when working with darker colors, if I don't have some sort of cream shadow to kind of set, set my look, then it's going to end up flaking a lot, and that's where we end up getting creasing and it's not gonna last us all through the night. Especially being a DJ, she needs something that's going to last her all night long. Really, when working here, it's not about being perfect, it's about setting the foundation, setting the base. When you're working with rocker-inspired looks, you're not looking for perfection or absolute blending, but more so for balance. We're not taking it up too high, staying on the crease, with this particular color. We're gonna take the product, apply it underneath the eye, starting from the outside corner and just gently bringing it over towards the center. Again, remembering this is a layered technique, so we're not looking for perfection quite yet. Moving on, not adding any more product, but just kind of uh, taking it up. I'm using a blending brush just to soften up my lines and make sure that I have even consistency throughout. 
moving from the center of the crease out towards the edge. Now that we've started that and we have that set, our look is, you know, kind of getting there. We could see where we're going. I'm going to go ahead and reach for my Bedhead eyeshadow palette and going straight for our darker colors because we set it in there. Now when I apply it, it's going to really stick and we're going to have more of that Shirley Manson inspired look. Always taking your time with your blending brush just to ensure that you get the shape that you want and the right amount of softness. Redipping for the other eye. Once I've already added my product to the area I want it to, now I could just move it and transition it in different directions, creating a shape that I'm looking for. One of the most common mistakes with creating a deeper, a smoldery look, a rocker inspired, is that we tend to grab too much product. Knowing that all you need is a little bit, just moving it around gently is going to give you more of the desired look that you're going for. All right, now we're working on the low line. Adding some depth by using more of a copper shade is really what's gonna make this look more dimensional. Again, working from the outside edge, really pressing that product in where we want it, and then using light feather strokes to move it towards the center. Always making sure that you take a step back and check your balance. So really asking Colleen, hey, take a look at me, so we could see her face and make sure that we see the balance through the whole thing, not just focusing on one eye at a time. Another way to make the look really special and runway ready is grabbing a little bit of the cream shadow. This time I'm taking a number 13, again from the Makeup Forever line, and dotting it right here into the center using my blending brush again. And moving it over. Starting again from the center right here at the peak, moving it up and over, and then at the bottom, taking it towards the side. We can see already that we're starting to see more dimension with this shape because we are moving a little bit into a transitional season. Adding some of these gold tones is really nice. It richens up the look. And it's more inspired again from like um, Louis Vuitton. We saw, we saw a lot of their advertisements going on. And that way we're combining our runway Louis Vuitton look with our Shirley Manson rocker style. Ensuring that even though Colleen has her DJ side, she is a New Yorker at heart. We're just gonna finish it up real lightly using a fan brush and a nice shimmer blush and an apricot tone. Just so we can give her a happy, flush, dewy look. Having that shimmer in there really enhances the dew. Using the other side of my blush to kind of wipe away any excess that's fallen. Adding a bit of clear lip gloss. I always think it's important to use a lip brush because then I could easily tap it in the areas that I want to so I could build up my concentration, giving it that dimension by using a nude lip liner after the gloss so that way I could see that color shine through and my gloss doesn't take it away. Making sure that I'm just really focusing on her Cupid's bow and again at the bottom so we see a bit of a highlight and we're not trying to bring too much color throughout, but more so to define her lips. And then finally, after everything's said and done, finishing it off by just tipping her eyelashes with some black mascara. And that's our way to bring our rocker look and our runway style together and make it work for anyone. So again, with Colleen, we started with a nice cream eyeshadow in a gray tone, starting at the crease and blending up, making sure that we really focus on that adding the powder eyeshadow inside the same way, finishing it off with just a light bit of blush so that way she has a nice dewy look continuously throughout the night, a bit of light lip gloss, and tapping the mascara at the ends to really bring that look together. Today we're gonna to be working on a minimal mod look. My name is Barry Bakken. I'm the creative director here at Main Entrance Artists in New York City. And this is Mari. She's one of our clients here. She's a resident New Yorker, and like all New Yorkers, she needs to have something that's professional, but also she wants to have fun with it. So the thing about minimal and mod, you want to have a graphic type of shape working within the color. I'm utilizing two different tones, a quartz, 
as well as a pale coral. Both of those tones are perfectly on trend for fall. And I'm just going to be isolating a crescent shape right in this longer area of the haircut. Now, I've already consulted with DJ Riggs, the creative director that's gonna be cutting Mari's hair. And we've decided on working a shape that still maintains more of an emphasis in the fringe area. So to take my crescent shape, first I take roughly a half circle here. So I'm gonna start skinny, get wider in the middle, and come back to a skinny point. So it's really important that in this section, it's widest in the middle area. If it's wider at the end, you're not gonna have a nice flow of color. It's gonna be like a big block. We are gonna work with a block color, meaning that we're working root to end. So I'm gonna go ahead and isolate this crescent. This is where we're gonna have our contrast tone. And that's gonna be our pale coral. Now, whenever you're working with toners or glosses, what you wanna do is work on towel dried hair. So you can see that even though Mari's hair is damp, it's not dripping wet, but it's not dry either. Now also when you're working with a toner, you wanna work where it's easier to rinse first. So I'm gonna start in the back and work my way to the front. To create my quartz color, what I'm using is a color that has no level, which means that it's pure tone. So I'm gonna get a nice reflection, because you can see there's some slightly different blondes happening in here. So to start, I'm just gonna take a section down the center of the head from my crescent, all the way down into the nape area, and just comb that to either side. Now because I am working on slightly damp hair, I'm able to take a little bit larger subsection because the color is really gonna emulsify very easily through that damp hair. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the toner application now. The color that you use outside of your crescent, you want that to be able to stay on a little bit longer. So again here, I'm using more of a sheer color. That's gonna allow that to stay on longer and give me the reflection that I'm looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and work all the way through to the lengths and ends. Because Mari's hair is quite short, it's all about the same porosity, meaning that the hair is gonna take the color evenly. So just working that through. I'm gonna take my next section and I'm working up from the bottom and working everything away from the face. Again, starting at the back, in case it's ready, I can rinse that out before the front. Really important as well is to make sure that you shampoo and condition before you apply your gloss or your toner. The reason being for that is that sometimes the lightener can get stuck in the hair and then your toner won't process the correct way because the lightener that's still on there will actually eat away the tone and you'll have an uneven application. And working that all the way through the links and ends. You can see that from pre-existing color, Mari's ends are slightly darker. So that's why I wanna make sure to go ahead and pull that color through all the way first. Now, before starting into the front of the head shape, remember we're working quickly, so we wanna make sure that the back processes at the same time as the other side. So we don't wanna do all of one side first and then all of the other side. So again, I'm gonna start at the bottom here, working from roots to ends. Now, if I was working on longer hair, that had been lightened, I would probably do the roots first and then pull it through the ends later because the porosity or the way that the hair accepts the color would be different and it would be a little bit more damaged on the ends most likely, so that would grab the color faster. Now in this case, we're working with a clear tone and we've added violet into it because if you think about your basic laws of color, violet is what neutralizes the yellow that you see in the hair. So the end result that we're gonna get from this is a beautiful reflective quartz. Now, a common misconception is that toners or glosses can actually make your hair lighter, but that's not the case. All it does is change the tonality. So if it's maybe too yellow or too orange, it can neutralize that and make it a beautiful reflective color. Sometimes it can appear lighter, just like a white wall looks brighter or lighter than a cream wall. The same thing applies to hair color. All right, so we've completed the back and I'm gonna spin her around a little bit. Now I'm gonna work vertical sections all the way through to the front, pulling everything back and away from the face. Now really important to make sure you get all those little baby hairs around the hairline. If you miss that with the toner, sometimes what can happen is it almost looks like you change their face structure or their hairline completely because you have areas that are toned and areas that are still raw. So as I spin Mari around here, gonna continue to pull everything 
over to the side. Just working with the way that the haircut will be after DJ cuts it, working with that natural fall of how it will be styled. And you can see that in the beginning, I started with that side parting. That's partially to see how the hair is going to fall and partially so that I remember exactly how it's going to be cut and how it's going to be styled. And especially when you're working with shorter shapes, you really want to focus your placement in the area that has the most length. That's usually going to be your focal point, and that's where you want to show it off with a pop of color. When you're working with toners, it's important to trust the color and know that it's going to work for you. So even though it looks like it's turning purple, I know that that's not actually happening. So one way that you can check is just to separate the hair, move some of that color off, and you can see here that we have a beautiful blonde that's coming through, and you can see that quartz tone starting to develop. So now we've placed in all of the quartz, and we're gonna have that minimal and mod pop of color right through the middle of the focal point of the haircut. So that crescent that we isolated earlier, we're gonna work from root to point, with our pale coral tone. Now what I've used to create this pale coral is a clear, so that's just gonna add shine. And to that, I've added a pure tone. So I've added a little bit of an orange and a little bit of a red. And you can see that actually, the color that you see here really reflects the color it will be as an end result. Now the great thing about working with toners like this is that if Mari decides that you know what, that was fun for a week, but I'm not sure if I wanna stay with that. That's fine because it'll wash out softly and the tone will become softer as time wears on. You can see again here, being really precise with my application, keeping that pale coral only in the crescent area and working that down onto one mesh, which is a very fine piece of styrofoam paper. Some of them are made of like more of a wax paper and that just helps to isolate the colors in a really neat fashion. And sometimes as colorists, what we tend to do is put so many pieces and so many highlights into a shape that it all ends up looking the same. When you wanna make a really strong impact, the simpler the better. In that simplicity, there is strength, and that's where we're gonna get that minimal mod feeling, is because this technique is so simple, it's really gonna pop. And it's gonna fold that mesh up. Okay, so we're back to rinse out our minimal mod look, and it's been approximately 10 minutes. We've just processed that visually. I'm gonna remove the one mesh, and I'm gonna rinse Mari's hair out really well first before I shampoo. Now, I'm gonna be working with a lighter weight conditioner. Sometimes your natural tendency would be to get a deep conditioner after blonding service, but what you wanna remember is that sometimes that deep conditioner has protein, and the protein actually tries to fight for room in the hair. So what can happen is it actually pushes the toner that you just put in out of the hair. So just working with a mild, gentle conditioner. It is moisturizing, but it's not a deep conditioner. And in this case, usually you would start on the ends, but now we're just working it all the way through. One, because Marion's hair is quite short, and also it's been lightened all over, so all of it moves that condition. Just rinsing the conditioner really well here making sure that the hair feels clean but soft. So you can see already, even when it's wet, that you have that really interesting contrast of the pale quartz with the pale coral. All right, so we're back with the end result for Minimal Mod. You can see the color works really well with the cut that Mari has. And just to recap what we did was first globally lightening everything, and then working in with a crescent shape, you can see exactly where that was right here. Block coloring everything underneath that, the quartz color, that was a very pale violet, and then in that crescent shaping, working from root to point and using our pale coral tone. The contradiction in colors creates an interesting contrast and a nice addition to a focal point in the haircut. Keeping it simple, keeping it minimal and mod. Thank you. All right, so now we're going in with high craft blow drying techniques so that we can actually finish off the look and we can really blow dry the hair so we really show off the elements of the shape. Right now, we're just actually doing a technique that we call rotational blow drying right now. And that's usually just kind of giving me the effect of letting the hair air dry a bit. So notice with the blow dry, just moving it in a circular motion. And now we have the root boost that's sitting on the crown. So as I go in, you'll notice I'm just gonna shake my hands in there. 
and then freeze it. This is called a freeze technique. So I'm freeze drying the roots so it creates volume. And then just come in with the brush, right away starting at the nape area. You'll notice the movement that I'm giving the hair. Just so as I brush it, it creates this type of swing with it. Because remember, the cut was sliced to go that direction. So even when I brush the hair, I want to give it that same momentum in it. Right now, as it starts to dry, it really just pops out. And it creates a, a, a nice resemblance of what's going to happen when you go out into the streets. And now we're getting to the end of the blow dry, where we're just going to focus on the crown top, making sure that that goes back. Now the only thing we have left to really detail is the fringe. Taking the hair, see how I'm grabbing it there? Now, go in the direction you actually want it to go to. Let it cool and set. And you can start to see how that just really starts to give you that push and that shift. And I'm gonna have a look up just a bit, perfect. Then we'll grab the flat iron. Now notice the way we blow dried with the brush, going from side to side. The way I'm gonna flat iron that hair is the same way. And I know it seems like a lot of steps, but once you get your flow down with it, it's quite, quite easy to go in and get. So once again, starting at the back. Utilizing the comb. And the flat iron together. When you think of high craft, obviously the first thing you wonder, what's, where, what's the high? The high mainly gives that element of luxury. So I, I think inside of that, the best thing to create that is just kind of having that nice refined look. And the flat iron really had, adds to that, that type of feel. So that's the reason for going in and utilizing this tool to give the hair more of that type of effect. Once again, just moving that towards the face. And notice how I'm taking my time. I'm not really trying to rush this process. It's more about, you know, really making sure you get it in nice and, nice and good. Because if you're just clamping through the hair, you're not really doing anything but flattening frizz. Like remember, the comb is gonna detangle while the flat iron flattens. And that's what gives you the runway effect. All right. So now we can just start to see the shape become a bit more refined. And her features instantly pop out, you know. Obviously she's gonna get makeup done, but you know, if she wasn't to have it, she does have a nice natural beauty that really speaks out quite well with the shape. But notice, no matter how much I texturize, I'm thinking about how the perimeter is gonna fall right in this area. So you notice how it's breaking up? It's exactly what we want to happen, but we wanna be able to control that. And I think that's the key thing to think about is actually controlling whatever takes place. Now we're just gonna come in this way and add strength. Notice I'm gonna put the blades here, drop down, Just adding just a bit more of a statement right there. Now we're just gonna go in with this particular product. And this is just the Still Life Molding Wax. So it's quite creamy. So for me, I just wanna make sure that when I go in with it, I just take just a bit, just about that much. Smooth it out. And then just taking it with your palms and then sliding it down likewise. So same thing, just wanna do that on all around the head shape. Notice we're really only making sure we put it on the ends. And then whatever's left, we're just gonna work it through the hair. All right guys, that's a nice interpretation of high craft. Thank you for coming in with Main Entrance Artist, working with me, DJ Riggs, as well as my accomplice, Barry Bakken, who actually did this beautiful color, and I appreciate your time.